tyres are the most crucial component on your car. They are the only thing connecting your vehicle to the road. Further, different tyres perform better in different situations and on different surfaces. So with so much choice in the market, which is the best choice for you? We've come down to Calder Park with the team from Bob Jane T-Marts to see how they go about tyre testing to find out. Before we go any further, these are the brands that will be tested today. For this test, the Bob Jane team are looking at eight different all-terrain tyres, the sort you would fit to a 4x4 ute or wagon. There's a variety of all-terrain and mud-terrain tyres from brands including BF Goodrich, Bridgestone, J-Trax, Pirelli, Falcon, Yokohama and Goodyear. There are eight different brand new tyres overall, which will be swapped onto an Isuzu D-Max with a four-wheel drive system. All eight sets are mounted to a set of 17-inch monster wheels and are being tested with an identical pair of Isuzu D-Max utes and a professional driver to ensure the only difference in all the results are the tyres themselves. Testing will be conducted on both sealed and unsealed surfaces with measurement and data collected along the way. To help, we'll be using a GPS-based V-Box to ensure all data is accurate. On the tarmac surface to simulate day-to-day -day driving, the testing will cover 100 km an hour braking in both wet and dry, 80 km an hour braking in both wet and dry, a slalom and a high-speed lane change. As a chief tester involved in the tyre test process, Rodney Jane explains what exactly the team is looking for from each of the tyres in order to achieve a top marks result. So today we're doing a tyre test for Bob Jane Team Arts on 4x4 tyres. Um, you know, we're really looking to see how, we're doing a blind test, so looking to see how different tyres behave in different circumstances. So slalom tests, braking, cornering, and then we're doing some off-road testing. It's a blind test so we don't know what's on the car. And what we're really looking for is you know, what the grip levels are like in different circumstances and dry and wet conditions. And we're also looking to see how they handle in fast turning, you know, lane shifting circumstances, and then generally feel what they're like off-road. The way we're measuring today, we've got a V-Box, so that'll give us some data at the end of the test. But really what we're doing is looking at a controlled environment where, say for braking, we've got a braking point. Um, we set the car on cruise control at 60, 80 and 100 k's. Um, we hit the brakes at a point and then we see how well it stops. Um, you know, we're using the maximum pressure we can put on the brake pedal so it gives a pretty good indication. You know, like I think your, the expectation is if you look at manufacturers, most of the sort of global top 10 manufacturers all make good tyres and there's going to be subtle differences between them but I don't suspect there'll be massive differences between them. So the question about different tyres in wet environment versus dry environment, um, there's a number of things you've got to look at. One is how the tyres dissipate water, the other is the compound the tyre's made of. With softer compounds, you're going to get more likely better grip in the wet, but you know, you'll probably get a fast um, wear rate in the dry. So you know, it's about finding that compromise between wet grip, dry grip, wear rates on tyres, and dry grip as well. The final part of testing, these are off-road tyres after all, involves a steep incline and a controlled descent. As we know, changing your tyre pressures can change behaviour when off-road, but for the purposes of testing here, we've kept the cars to the placard level, which means the results should be uniform across both disciplines. Okay, well I've done a lot of driving on mud terrain and all terrain. You know, I think there's appearance and then there's the effective outcome of what the tyre can do. Like a mud terrain tyre, if you want your car to look tough, it looks great, you know, big chunky blocks of rubber. Traditionally a more aggressive sidewall, however all terrain tyres are coming with much more aggressive sidewalls now. To me the biggest difference with the mud terrain is it's not really built for everyday on-road driving. It's got, you know, typically it's got more surface area because it's got bigger rubber blocks. You know, it can start off having decent levels of grip, but typically over time they'll feather up and become noisy. Whereas a, you know, an all-terrain tyre is you know, made for a better split of on-road, off-road. It's going to be a quieter tyre, it's going to have better grip, it's probably going to have much lower noise, and you know, it's, it's going to be a better all-round tyre, particularly for most environments where we're all driving on bitumen roads with doing a little bit of off-road. So typically the best tyre for most of us driving on the roads today is an all-terrain tyre, and that's my experience. Today it's sort of semi-wet, so we're going through some sort of pretty muddy sections and some sort of pretty dry sections. When in an off-road environment we're looking for a level of comfort, you know, how do they feel over the bumps and everything else? You know, how do they hook up when you're going up a steep hill with a bit of clay and a bit of mud? And how does the car sort of handle with those tyres on? And we sort of seated the pants a lot of it in, in trying to find the right outcome. Okay, so testing is completed. What are the results? 
After a day's worth of testing and collating results, the bob chain team ranked each tyre in relation to each test. For the lane change activity, the Yokohama Geolander all-terrain tyres achieved the best result of the bunch. The team says this is because the pattern design is more SUV than 4x4, with on-road advantages to sidewall and block design too. After Slayland testing, it was found that the Bridgestone Jeweler all-terrains performed better than all others. It was rated highly in on-road characteristics overall, aside from a poor showing in relation to its dry braking score. The J-Trax brand ran close to the Bridgestone tyres in terms of handling, while bettering it in the braking measures. As part of brake testing, the Yokohama Geolander all-terrains again took out top marks for dry braking, but it was the Falcon Wild Peak all-terrain tyres which won in the wet braking subcategory by a larger margin. Testing off-road found that the BF Goodrich all-terrain KO2 tyres scored higher than all others. Where this tyre fell down in on-road capability, it excelled and made up for off-road. After all categories were scored together, it was a Dark Horse Falcon Wild Peaks which performed the best overall. Its on-road matters and off-road capability rated higher across the board than all other tyres. This confirms the belief that the Falcon Wild Peak tyre is a great value offering for four-wheel drive owners in Australia who spend time both on and off-road. So there you have it. Not all tyres are created equal and we've seen a few differences in performance on different surfaces. It really does show the value of this testing and your own research to ensure you get the best tyre for your situation. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the Drive YouTube channel for more technical tests like this. And if you want to see the full results of today's tests, go to drive.com.au.